In the last video, we looked at uh, each of the workstations and did an analysis for that. Uh, so if you haven't watched that, uh, make sure you watch that video first. And now we're going to look and do a part analysis. So it's going to be a lot of the same steps with some minor changes. So to create a new pivot table, we're going to select all the data in our cleaned data sheet. We're going to insert another pivot table into a new sheet. Again, we have the range into a new worksheet. And we're going to title this worksheet part analysis. Now the only change here, if you remember from last time, the rows were our workstation, but this time our rows are going to be our part. We're still going to keep our cycle and wait time in the filters, and now our filter is going to be by workstation instead of by a part, as it was in the workstation analysis. We're going to bring the difference over to values again, make the same changes, so open the pivot table field, change the format to time, and instead of count, use the average. Let's see all these changes. We're going to go ahead and insert a new pivot chart. Add two slicers. Our slicers are going to be our two filters, so cycle and wait time, and then workstation. So we also need to change the title like last time. We're going to choose an unused cell, concatenate. It's going to be pretty similar. We're going to click on the cycle wait time, new string in quotes. So we're going to look at the cycle of time by part for workstation. Close that string, and the last string will be the workstation number. Close off that formula. So let's look at cycle time by part for workstation one. You can see that'll change for us. We're going to make the title change based on that new concatenate cell. Drag it up and cover it. So look at what this data is showing us here. We have the cycle time um, filtered out with workstation one for all the parts. So over the time from part one to 14, you can see how long the operator was working on part one through 14 at workstation one. You can also look at workstation two, see how it changes throughout, check the standard deviation. Uh, see how consistent it is throughout all the parts. Workstation 3 um, and 4 and 5 are going to have less data because some of the uh, work in process is still on the line. So you can go ahead and look at that. Understanding this will help you again with step 5 and some of the analysis. So make these charts look nice, take some screenshots of them, and include them in your summary and conclusions.